There's a pretty one, Ulysses. Hello Booktube, I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my channel. Here I am with another Friday Reads. This will be fairly abbreviated because really all that's been going on since Wednesday has been me getting a head start on the Women in Translation Readathon. And I'm not going to talk about any of that stuff here. You'll check my daily vlogs for that. But I do want to wrap up a couple other books that I either finished or bailed on this week before I started the Women in Translation Readathon, just in the interest of being uh, comprehensive. So, <laughs> don't really quite know how to talk about this one, but I bailed on Memento Mori by Muriel Spark, which was the Memento Mori buddy read with Memento Mori of Adam of Memento, Memento Mori. <laughs> and uh, I got about halfway through and I just got so disgusted, even though this was a five-star read for me 25 years ago, and I was quite enjoying it until about the last 25 pages before I bailed. And then I just realized how sick I was of Muriel Spark, and I'm not sure that I ever want to read her again. <laughs> She's just not my kind of writer. I loved The Driver's Seat, which I buddy read uh, in the spring or summer, with the spring, I think, with Leah of Hide and Seek. And then I thought, I love Muriel. And I started collecting this whole series of these newly reissued hardcovers and read The Comforters, didn't like it as much as I thought I would on a reread, hated Robinson. And then when I started this, just last week, and this was a buddy read with, I don't know who ultimately will join the buddy read in due course, but at the time that I was active, those few days that I was active, it was Adam, Steve Donahue, and Richard of Richard Reads. The writing is so good, and it's so witty. And every word is perfectly placed, and you couldn't want to, you, you wouldn't want to take one word away or add a word anywhere or replace a word. It's just genius. But what happened for me was, as I had forgotten how much backstory there was for all the old characters, and the backstories were was make, were making me grumpy, and I had to really think about that. Why are the backstories? Because they were really much more in depth than I had remembered. I, Good Lord, 25 years ago, I don't remember a thing about it, but, and I was grumbling about why, do I, why do I need to know all this stuff that happened in 1908 between this character and that character and stuff, and then I just kind of had an aha moment. I wasn't able to articulate it when I suddenly and abruptly withdrew from the Voxer buddy read, but now I think I can. I was grumbling because in a Muriel Spark novel, you're not meant to care about any of the characters. These are not books to be read the way that I read a book, which is I'm a deeply, helplessly emotional reader. And that just doesn't fit with Muriel Sparks' fiction. And once I realized that, that like, yeah, it's I, there's so much detail, but I don't care about, she doesn't, I'm not supposed to care, I don't care. The whole thing is structured in such an intellectual and witty and satirical way that there's no room for my typical uh, response to literature. And so the backstory was driving me crazy because for me, you know, learning all the details about my characters is a, is a way of falling in love with them or, or hating them or whatever. But that's just besides the point with Mio Sparks fiction, which is n not a criticism of her fiction at all. It's just, we are a terrible match, Muriel and I. So I bailed, and I, I might try another Muriel Spark novel in a year, like maybe a diet of one Muriel Spark novel a year, because, you know, in those small doses, I quite enjoy her, but she... Uh, is not really my kind of writer. So, bye-bye, Muriel Spark. <laughs> and sorry, guys, for leaving you cold. Uh, I hope some of the lovely other booktubers who were waiting for their books to arrive will soon join and you can resume your buddy read. But I am done. There's no spark, dare I say it.
Okay, and the other one that I finished this week was a Monica Dickens, a Monica Dickens novel from the year of my birth, 1966, The Room Upstairs. And it was a two-star read for me. And I was so disappointed and pissed off because it had moments of not, I wouldn't quite say brilliance, but four-star goodness. The writing in the opening chapters was really good, and then it just felt like she was rushed. Ange and I did this as a buddy read, and she really agreed with me that it just felt like she was writing to a deadline, and it was just slapdash. It's about an, it was about an old lady widow on a farm, and the house, a new freeway had went, had gone, had been built right through the farm, and she'd always hated that, and then her husband died, and she had grown up in the house with her parents, and there's all these memories and some kind of allusions to a ghost. So was it a ghost story? Was it a supernatural story? Or was it about people in the 1960s? questioning, you know, like, was it supposed to be spooky or not? I don't think Monica Dickens ever really figured out what kind of a novel she was writing, and by the end it got really thrillery. Uh, but uh, her name was Sybil, I think. Uh, Sybil has gotten too old to live alone, and so her family doesn't know, quite know what to do with her, so she has a couple live-in ladies that one she hires and one she just befriends in a really unbelievable way. This woman just knocks on her door one night and she lets her in. And uh, she, this woman moves in, and can she be trusted? And how malevolent, how much of a villain was she? And it goes from there. And there were times where it really felt like that it was a quite intense story about an old lady and how what what happens to her. She doesn't want to leave, and what does her family do? And it, it, there, were, there were scenes here and there that were actually quite moving. But for the most part, it just kept bumping from one kind of story to another. And I just, at a certain point, it was reminding me of the movie Psycho. So I went and Googled, when was that? That was about 1960 or 1961. So it really felt like, was she just slap, uh, dashing this novel off to get it optioned for a film? Which, as far as I'm aware, never happened. But it got really thrillery towards the end, and it just was a dog's breakfast and deeply unsatisfying and it had so much potential like the character of Sybil was often really vivid and uh, some of the relationships she had she had with her grandson's what new wife there was parts about all that and it could have been you know there was the the ghost in her own mind of her parents and that could have been told in a really satisfying way i thought it could have been really well told and it wasn't well told it was just terrible it's not the worst book i've ever read but that book was published because of her famous last name and no other reason now Ange has read another novel by her that's uh, by monica dickens that she really loved i know thomas of the readers podcast uh, he's the first one to that i'd ever heard about monica dickens being worth reading so there must be other books out there but this one was embarrassingly awful, so I do not recommend it. Otherwise, I'm having a fabulous time with the Women in Translation Readathon, so I'm not sure there will even be a Friday Reads next week. It'll just be kind of my, well, I'll probably put Friday Reads on the title, but it'll just be my daily vlogs, but I'm having a really rich time reading a bunch of Women in Translation, so. Life is beautiful. I hope you're I hope you have a great weekend, reading-wise or otherwise. Tell me all about it. Thanks for watching.